Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. I read an article after 9 11 happened that there was um, 25,000 uh, new Muslims that same year. Right. Mm. It was oh. short, maybe oh. a yeah, year, year or, so, or so after 9 11. I read that. Like, it had a, like, it caused, like, mass conversion and have the opposite effect. You know, but when 9 was... ha happened, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, Bismillah, Bismillah. Okay. But when 9 11 happened, I was already Muslim, like, maybe, a, um, I want to say 11 years at the time. And I was at my, my mom's house. And then, my mom, she just started screaming. She's calling us. All right. All right. And, and Rahimullah, Rahimullah Ummi. Right. So, so she calls me to the TV and then we see the, the, the first building was like up in, up in flames. Like what happened? It was like a plane flew into it and we're just watching. And then we saw the second plane go, go into the, uh, on the news. We saw it live. Right. And. You know, but for us at those at that time, I was still with Troy at that time, and we were like holding it down. You know, like we were still we were still wearing our thobes and running outside in our thobes and our beards, and we didn't, we didn't care, right? We were just like you, you know, we we're like we we're strong, you know, you know, uh, you know, men had to sell a fee, you know what I mean? These type of things, right? But we did see a lot of um, brothers, you know, shave their beards, t take off their. Um, their what you gonna call it? Their thobes and what like this happened like widespread, and mm -hmm. then after 9/11, that's when Islam became peace. Not before; <clears throat> it was after. You understand? We saw, uh, uh, you know, and that was that was the beginning of the censorship of imams, as what the brother Ibrahim was saying. You understand? Because the imams would speak freely before 9-11. If, if you listen to a general khutbah today and compare it to any khutbah in the 90s, it's like night and day. You know, you're not getting the same quality. You know what I mean? Because they, they, yeah. they had no fear about dealing with the issues around the community back in those days, right? But what we yeah. have now is we have like a, a type of censorship because of 9-11. You feel me? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. If anybody can look up right now, uh, just type in Dr. Bilal Phillips. Type in Dr. Bilal Phillips and, and, and Google and see what you get. Dr. Bilal Phillips. Does anybody here think Dr. Bilal Phillips is a terrorist, terrorist or an extremist? No. Look up no, his name and see what you find. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he... Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Say say what you... What, what's what's he, the point? Not even, yeah. even in Canada, where he's from, right? he can't even give lectures in... in Masajid, every time every time he comes here, they shut down the mistress where he speaks. You, you feel me? So, I mean, I have my ideas about 9-11. I'm sticking to my ideas about 9-11 because it's backed by facts. You understand? And the fact that uh, this pullout with, the, with Afghanistan happened so suddenly, and uh, they basically threw all of the people that helped these devils underneath the bus in order to uh, basically, as I said, as I said before, pull back because of what's happening with China, right? This shows you that the mindset of these, 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 these uh, Shia team, man. they're big Shia team. They kill their own people, right? Then they say the Muslims kill, kill the people and they attack 14 different Muslim countries killing millions of human beings because of buildings that they destroyed themselves so that they can go usurp the resources in poor um, African and Middle Eastern countries. Mm. You feel me? Mm. That's just you know, the you know, version. You know the conspiracy, there are a lot of conspiracy theories and, uh, about it, and I'm not yeah. saying your one was a conspiracy, but... Maybe, maybe we can... I would like to come on to that maybe sure. a bit a bit further down, um, but I want to I, I want to speak more about your experience, uh, especially Ibrahim and the features, 
about yeah, I'm on this a no kind of, about the I'm change no of, of, of how it was like pre 9/11 as a Muslim and and after 9/11 in the West, in, in especially in in yeah. the Americas, you know, Canada and uh, and the States. Well, you, I think that was a good point. You know, could you try to find some of those those old lectures, those those really yeah. old lectures? Even listen to Imam Siraj Siraj Wahaj. Listen to even Hamza Yusuf, right? And I don't yeah. listen to Hamza Yusuf like that. But if you listen to these people, right? If you listen to um, uh, what you would call it, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Hakim Quick, and their old lectures. Listen to the quality. Like any one of those lectures will mm. instantly just pop you up, like wake you up. Yeah. You understand? Because they were speaking freely. You feel me? Now, yeah. the lectures in our time are restricted to basically thick type stuff. You understand? Yeah. And they don't deal with the the, uh, the issues in the general uh, Muslim society or society at large. Yeah. You understand? Back in those days, we were we were using islam as a as a healing method for the society at large we we're making that we we're in the streets we're we're cleaning people up who are who are hooked on drugs and all this kind of stuff like it's, it, and this is no joke this is like real stuff you know what i mean we're yeah. doing all that stuff so so now would you would you say from a dawah perspective um yeah um you know would you say the Dao was much kind of better after 9 11 or before because you you know you've got that side of things where you're seeing people really cleaning up the streets. And also Siraj Wahaj is known for that, he, you know, doing a lot of the work and people like that. Um, but, but like, you know, after 9-11, there was also a mass conversion of people kind of actually being aware of Islam. So how did yes. the Dawah change to non-Muslims? Well, the way I, I look at the Dawah, it's, it's like in stages, because you can see what was happening, right? The, the best year of Dawa was in the 90s, right? After 9-11, what happened was those people who converted, most of them were, were self-studied because uh, people were just reading the Quran and they were just becoming Muslim, just like that. You know, so even at Troy, some people would just like call Troy or whatever, you know, I read the Quran, I want to become Muslim. You understand? Mm. So this, this was the phenomenon that was happening, right? However... Uh, after 9-11, what happened was that you saw this type of um, bowing down to the dominant society in order to uh, not offend people. You yes. understand? So people, people were, were softening the message of Islam not to, not to sound like a terrorist. Yes. You feel me? Yeah. They're doing that intentionally. They don't. So, and when you start softening your message, the softening the message of Islam, are you going to get like a true uh, grassroots mm. message to the people? Mm. You're not. It, it, it's mm. you're not. You understand? Mm. And not only that, but the, there was actual legit censorship of imams by the government. Mm. Mm. They were censoring imams. And if you if you look at France, what's happening in France today, for example, who right now is trying to tell the Muslims who they can or can't have as imams in the masjid in France? Yeah, they have. Um, it, it, it has to be government approved now in France. Exactly, exactly. And they even deported an imam for reciting Quran on aid. And how were they able to do this? They're able to do this by saying they're terrorists. So the yeah. one who goes into 14 Muslim countries and kills millions of people based upon a crime that they never committed, nor do they have anything to do with. Right? Those people... The ones who are getting killed are the terrorists. And the ones mm. who are doing the killing are the victims. Yeah. Mm. And y'all go for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the mentality of the Muslims is that you can't see these people as enemies. You just can't. You want to be loved by them. And it's a part of the prophecy of the Prophet, mm. where he said, 
that you will uh, love the life of this world and hate death. Mm. You'll become like the foam and the scum of the sea. You'll be so many, but you can't do anything. You can't. You can't speak the truth. Yeah. For the for the Ibrahim, you have a. Yeah, you know, Subhanallah. I think he mentioned something interesting. Um, brother, I didn't catch your name. Um, uh, like he said, like, features. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said that Islam became peace after 9-11 and that's a really interesting statement because before 9-11 when we were learning Islam it was always Islam is submission Islam is submission, you're submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yeah. after 9-11 it was like everyone, Islam is peace yeah. um, mm -hmm. and then now look 20 years later look at the difference between Muslim youth today versus Muslim youth back then Right. Mm -hmm. Muslim youth back then was like, Islam is about submission. You got to follow what Allah says. Even if the youth back then were doing haram, it's like, I know I'm doing haram. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus now, it's like the idea of submission doesn't make sense. I don't like what you're telling me about Islam. So maybe I'm just going to come up with my version of Islam. My Islam is different than your Islam. Um, that type of like rhetoric and, and discussion. And so, that's what again, happens when you get marching orders on your religion from the enemy. Yeah. yeah. When your enemy is telling you what you can or can't learn about Islam, that's exactly what's going to happen. So we need like a grassroots uh, dawah, and we need to not fear the enemy. Will they spy on us? Yes. Will they set us up? Yes. Will they catch us and and and, and jail us and all this kind of stuff? Yes. Like yes. What do you want me to tell you? How many innocent Muslims have they captured and jailed already in Guantanamo Bay? How many innocent Muslims internationally have they killed? How much blood is soaked with innocent blood because of these wicked people? What do you want me to tell you? you you're gonna make, you're gonna spread Islam and be comfortable? You have to make a decision, and that's why we're losing. You feel? Anyway, sorry, sorry for cutting you off, Sheikh. Go ahead. 